G'day scrappers. Finally, I'm melting a little bit of copper. Uh, this is the first time I've used this furnace in over a year. So I've just got it on low temperature and I'm just trying to uh, cure it to make sure all the moisture is out of there. I've got the uh, crucible in there. So yeah, here we go. And uh, I'm only going to do a, uh, a little bit of a trial this time around because I don't have enough gas. I want to use up the gas bottle so I can go and get a fresh bottle and then start a proper copper melt. So what I'll probably do is two bars and we'll see how we go. I just wanted to show you uh, something about uh, when you're melting copper and you're in your backyard, say in suburbia, um, this kind of copper here, it's clean, there's no very little lacquer on it. So you can put this in before the copper in your furnace is super hot um, and has actually started melting. You can put it in before and let it heat up and melt on its own and it won't cause any smoke pollution um, but when you've got copper like see this copper here it's uh, it's got lacquer over it right quite a lot of lacquer if I put this into the furnace now before it's totally heated up it'll start burning this off and it will really smoke up so you'll get a lot of smoke in your backyard or in your workshop wherever you are so the best time to put this kind of copper into your furnace is once your copper has already started melting and you put this into melted copper rather than um, just a, a cooler furnace that way when it smokes up it releases that gas or whatever from the lacquer the heat of the furnace actually uses that smoke and, and and burns it and turns it into vapor rather than smoke i'm not really sure the technicality of it but i found that if i just put this in now this will smoke up really bad and if you had to have a lot of it it's going to um you know really smoke up if if you don't have any wind it's really bad so but putting this straight into melted copper uh, yeah, it just seems to, uh, the smoke burns away inside the furnace because it's so hot. By then it's like 1200 degrees, uh, so it just burns that smoke away. And it, yeah, that's just what I found. But uh, clean copper, no problem. And then if I bring this in sunlight, you can see there's, um, there's so many different shades that's bare bright so that's you know ab about as pure copper as you can get without much uh, lacquer there might be a very tiny amount but I doubt it this is uh, when it's bare bright it's meant to be bare bright <laughs> um, whereas say this copper here this is uh, it's not as bright so it's obviously got some lacquer the one I showed you it's very dark so it's got a lot of lacquer but every different wire has got a different level of um of lacquer over it this is the only one that's clean so this one here has obviously got lacquer uh this one here is even darker so all this stuff i don't put it in until i've actually got melted copper in the furnace and then once i put this in it doesn't smoke up this kind of copper here again um, it's this is bare bright also uh, the only thing is because it's been sitting around for a little while it's got a bit of tarnish on it but it's actually still bare bright um, yeah so I just wanted to point that out so when you're starting your uh, furnace always try and use um, bare bright or um, old ingots that uh, that uh, didn't turn out 
where all the lacquer's already burnt away. Then you can start, once it's melted, start adding your dirt, uh, your, your, your slightly lacquered copper and uh, yeah, to that. All right, I thought I'd just add that in while I'm waiting for the, uh, the furnace to heat up and the copper to actually melt. We're getting there. I've got two old bars in there that uh, turned out lopsided, didn't turn out very good. So they were always going to be remelted. And underneath is just some bare bright that it's sitting on. So uh, still got uh, probably uh, 10 or 15 minutes to go before that's set up. And uh, there's, I'm using two crucibles, uh, sorry, two molds that I'll, I'll before, before the copper melts, I'll put the molds on top of the furnace to heat them up. And this one here is just a spare one, so I can empty out what's left in, in the crucible. I've got my, uh, my vest, or whole, well, it's actually a whole jacket. So it's like a cowhide jacket that I put on, just in case when I pour the copper, there's a little bit of splashback protection. If uh, little bits of copper splashed up, this would... Uh, you know protect it and I also got my face mask all right so it's just a sit and wait game now but uh, the other thing is because I'm just trying to use up one gas bottle uh, well actually two I've got two half empty bottles so I'm trying to use them both up so I can go and get some fresh gas and um, normally I wouldn't just melt or pour two bars if you're really going to uh, you want to make it worth your while once the furnace and the crucible is very hot, you're best off doing three or four batches in one day. That way, um, yeah, you're making the most of your gas because uh, you can use up almost, uh, you know, 20% of your tank of gas just to heat the thing up. So, um, yeah, so once you start rolling, and then if I was going to do um, three or four different batches, I wouldn't have a spare mold just for the leftover until the end, because I would leave what's left in the, in the crucible, so it's already at melting temperature, and I'd, I'd put it straight back in and start putting more copper into it, and it'll go really quick. So the first time is usually quite slow. It seems slow because it takes a long time for the uh, crucible to uh, get to a uh, copper melting temperature. Um, and then don't forget that the melting temperature is less than the pouring temperature. So you need it even hotter than copper melt because by the time you take it out, if it was just that melting temperature, by the time you took it out of the furnace and brought it and started pouring it, it would be too cold. It would start setting again. And by the time you take it out and put it into the garage or you know start pouring it, it'll go from two, uh, 1220 to about 1150 within uh, 30 seconds. So that's why um, some people get confused and think melting temperature is, uh, is what you need. It's actually pouring temperature, <laughs> which is probably 40 or 50 degrees more than uh, melt. All right, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm a bit impatient. It's the first time I've done it in a long time. So, uh, yeah, I'll just sit here and wait for it to uh, start melting. I'm actually scrapping stuff out at the same time. So uh, I'm not just sort of uh, wasting time melting copper. I've been processing a lot of stuff, doing a couple of these bins. So I've been emptying these bins and just trying to catch up after uh, the the new year break. I had a bit of a break and uh, yeah, we've had uh, quite a lot of uh, fires and stuff like that in Australia. Well, heaps, the whole half the country is on fire virtually. But uh, for those of you that were concerned about me and what I'm doing, well, uh, don't worry about me. I'm in Melbourne and uh, I'm in a city. So uh, the bushfires doesn't affect me apart from the smoke haze and the, the pollution in the air. But um, obviously it's pretty uh, dramatic what's happened, you know, what's been happening. Uh, I just heard that uh, last year um, was the driest and the hottest 
we've ever had in Australia since uh, they started making record. So, so that's got to say something. The hottest and the driest we've ever had. So that's why we've got bushfires. Uh, well, we always have bushfires, but uh, um, yeah. And, and some of the towns that were hit a couple of weeks ago when it was really bad, they're being hit again right now. So it's second wave of bushfires in the same place. So that's pretty, pretty awful too. Anyway, but everything's cool. We, uh, we all go on and uh, yeah. All right, well, let's get this copper melted. See, now it's already melted, so I can just keep adding more copper. If I, what I found that if you stuff it up with copper at the start, it takes too long to heat up. So you, if you can put a solid a block in the start, once it's melted, then you can just keep adding copper and that'll melt and that'll just keep going down. So now that it's uh, melting point, I can put some of this burnt copper in there. Well, it's not burnt, it's just uh, heavily lacquered. And I can just, uh, it'll just let me start getting rid of this and you'll see, if I hang around long enough, you can, I don't know if you can see, but uh, it started off as a flame. And what that flame would have normally been was smoke. But because of the very high heat of the furnace, it actually used that smoke as part of its fuel. It just burnt it up. So it just made the furnace a little bit hotter. And so no smoke, no pollution, and it's all gone. That's only because uh, the copper's at melting point. So I'll let that melt through. I've got uh, uh, quite a bit more than I probably need. So, that should just about do me but it doesn't matter if I've got leftover because that'll just uh, go the little ingot that I've got left over will just uh, start the next melt because you always want uh, nice clean copper when you're starting up your melt see the flame again if it wasn't at melting point, that would be smoked up and the whole yard would smoke up. So uh, that's just a really handy trick, especially if you're melting uh, copper in your garage or like a warehouse or something, and uh, you don't want it to smoke out the warehouse because it doesn't smell very good. That's the best way. Start with very clean copper. And once it's melted, then you can put all of your burnt, kind of uh, lacquered copper and it won't smoke up there we go nice just flame keeps everyone happy and uh, it doesn't uh, contaminate the environment <laughs> we don't need any more smoke in the in our air at the moment especially in Australia so uh, yeah all right couple minutes and I'm going to start pouring. Oh, actually, I forgot all about it. What I want to do... Is... Put these moulds on top of the furnace. Start them off on the sides. Just let them heat up a little bit. And then once they've heated up a bit, I put them towards the middle where it's most hot but for now just let them heat up you don't want them to uh, get uh, super heat straight away whilst from cold to uh, 1200 degrees celsius so so give them a couple of minutes like that and then move them over
just uh, heat this up a little bit so it's not super cold um, when I put the uh, crucible in it I mean it doesn't have to be hot it's just so it's not icy cold because you don't want to crack the crucible when it's uh, 1200 degrees Celsius and have molten copper going everywhere and also uh, it's a salamander crucible so they're pretty you know expensive they cost about $150 something like that these days price has just gone up on a lot of the crucibles but I need to get a salamander A8 just can't find one at the moment I want a little bit smaller so it's uh because it doesn't need to be so big and I think the slightly smaller crucible will heat up quicker um, because yeah I, I don't melt a full crucible or anywhere near a full crucible of copper at one time so I think an A8 for this 10 kilogram propane furnace is the will be the perfect size A10 it fits, it's okay, it works, but I think it's just a little bit too big and there's not enough space around the edge to uh, for the uh, heat to, get, to go around for the flame. So that's just my thoughts anyway. It might not be right, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just gonna put my safety gear on Okay. So, I think I got it around wrong. Okay. See with the A10, it's just enough room to put these tongs in.
Okay, so Okay, so as you can see, um, I didn't have enough because the copper uh, cooled down because I left it a little bit too long. I wasn't quick enough. I had it out there. I was mucking around a couple of times and I, I didn't pour that well over there. Um, so not the best pour first time around, but you've got you to make some mistakes. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of copper in the uh, crucible, but... I uh, just let it cool down it should peel off the crucible and I should be able to slide the whole bit of copper out um, because I'm not melting again I was just trying to use up the gas bottle so but there you go so yeah I didn't need the uh, overflow um, mold at all <laughs> but yeah a lot of it is uh, that would have been full easy. I had enough copper in there to fill two and a half of these at least. So uh, because of this overflow, it might not turn out good because once you uh, um, cut that piece off, uh, you can tell that it's not straight. But this one might actually turn out quite nice. Uh, I probably didn't have to fill this one so much because that would be about one and a half kilos. So about two pounds. No, what am I saying? Three pounds, that one. And that one will be close to two pounds. Okay. Beautiful on the base. Nice on the top, it's just this part here. And that is well clean up. But this one's actually a, a very nice size bar. Um, yeah. But it didn't have enough, so it didn't sort of like pour that. Oh, it's it's pretty good, but but believe me, you know, um, you get better really quick at this sort of stuff. 
it takes a little while um, but uh, yeah because this was the first time in over a year um, you know you forget the little intricacies <laughs> but yeah these would polish up good but you know like I said the worst comes to worst these start off the next pour uh, when we're going to do a lot of pours in one day um, but for now this was uh, pretty good so I'll just try polishing them up So when I polish bars, I'm not trying to get them shiny to look like gold or anything like that. Um, there's no point because within a couple of days, um, well, within a week or two, these will start going brown, you know, um, so they'll tarnish straight away. So, you know, so yeah, as I said, there's, there's no point in me trying to make this look like gold. Um, all it's benefiting is just so it looks fancy while I'm making the video but uh, what I want to do the reason why I polish is just to remove this tarnish you know this uh, uh, you know soot and mold whatever it is soot from the burning so the black stuff and you know just to get it nice and clean so it's uh, it's a turns into a pure copper bar because all the impurities have either burnt out um, yeah, or well, totally burnt out. Because um, I get some people saying, oh, well, that bar, it's not a pure copper bar. It actually is, because in copper wire, it's basically pure copper wire. Well, 99.99% .99 copper wire. Um, and then the impurities is on the outside. So it's that lacquer on the outside, which is not the impurities, which is the impurities. So once you actually melt your copper, those impurities burn away. So that's what we mean by impurities. It's, it's, this copper wire is pure copper with lacquer on top. That's all it is. So once you've burnt away that lacquer, you're left with pure copper. copper. That's it. And so it, it didn't turn too bad. I had to cut off that little piece here. So, I mean, it still could use a little work here by filing this down a little bit just to make it a bit smooth. But... Um, I don't like to file too much because then it just it doesn't look you know like a naturally poured bar it looks like it's had work done you know but you know but I suppose that's part of melting copper bars and and making ingots like this is is that because they're hand poured each one is different you know but I just love this this ripple effect on the top it's just beautiful it looks super beautiful and yeah this little one um you know again it's it sort of dipped down here because there wasn't enough copper but um, uh still it turned out quite good uh oh, this part when i took this off it sort of peeled a little bit away so um I'm, i'd most likely i'd prefer to remelt this one because it's just not right uh this one here this is really close the only thing that annoys me is this this part up along here the where I cut off this uh, excess piece uh, that normally doesn't happen I don't think I've ever had a bar that that has happened or maybe a little bit but not that much I just wasn't um, uh, prepared for uh, how it was pouring because it was starting to solidify remember what I said about melting temperature and pouring temperature there's a big difference so it's got to be at pouring temperature which is probably around 12 1240 
degrees Celsius. And then because I left it out for a couple of minutes, I was playing around. I had a couple of goes of pulling it out because uh, I wasn't sure which way to uh, put it into this ring. Um, so uh, it cooled down. And that's the first time that's ever happened too. But now that it's fresh in my mind, I'll remember next time. And uh, so I was just going to ask, you know, some of you guys enjoy watching my copper melt videos as well and uh, you know don't forget street scrapping is coming up in a it's still a, probably two months away so I've got a lot of things to you know a lot of time on my hands to play around so I might start making some more bars do a few giveaways um, probably start selling a few on eBay maybe uh, if you remember I was selling these for six or seven times the value of copper I should just get my scales Okay, so this little one, 800, 900 grams, so just short of uh, a kilo, and well, just short of two pounds almost exactly, because uh, one pound's 454, so two pounds would be 908, so almost, I mean, you can't get much closer than that, two pound bar, but still not that good. Um, this one, yeah, I mean, it's a nice actually a nice thick bar to keep I don't normally make them this thick but it's not one that I would sell because it's just not perfect you know um, so this one is 1.58 kilo so well over three pounds um, that's a you know pretty close to the heaviest bar I've made so understandable that uh, yeah if, I would have liked it if uh, yeah this part didn't happen but as i was saying i make um these bars and sell them on ebay i've been i haven't done it for over a year but uh, i was getting six or seven times the value of copper um selling it on ebay so at the moment this as candy copper that's all it would sell for even though you use it if you use uh bare bright it's still if you sell this back to the scrapyard uh it would only go as candy but it's only a 20 cent pound different, but we don't make copper bars to sell to the scrapyard. I'll just sell the copper as it is. This has got nothing to do with copper as scrap value. It's, it's art. It's a hobby. It's, you know, I'm not going to explain it because, uh, anyway, so let's say, uh, $6.50 a kilo. So copper value, this bar is worth $10 and 30 cents just in scrap value ten dollars thirty cents i would sell this for about sixty dollars okay and it, you know some people a lot of people didn't believe me um but i i've had two batches on ebay and they've all sold within two weeks and so i usually put about 15 bars up for sale and uh, each one individual each one different and uh yeah hand poured bars much better than factory machined buzz bars where they just get one big long length of copper uh, barring and they just cut it in pieces and then stamp you know that's that's factory copper that's not hand poured so um, yeah and it's because uh, copper needs such high heat it's uh, it's not easy so you might say well surely coppers a copper bar is not worth six times the value of copper well you bet it is because it costs a bit of money in gas i mean i, I would have wasted uh probably about a half a tank of gas here so about 10 liters i think or no not 10 liters a half tank they're only the little barbecue tanks so half a tank of that easily gone um but like i said the second melt if i kept going it wouldn't have been as much it would only be like you know 30% of the tank maybe a third of the tank and, and yeah probably even less probably a quarter so you'd probably get three good pours out of a whole tank if you worked really good um, but you should obviously you want to get at least two so that costs money too you know so uh, but there you go that was it if you guys got any ideas on um, what I should melt the only problem is that you can't get uh, molds to shape anything you want uh, otherwise they're very very expensive you know I'd like to get a nice big mold of say the map of Australia or something like that but you just can't get really big molds um, 
uh, they're just yeah way too expensive so if anyone's got any ideas on um, um, what I could be doing with melting copper uh, let us know I might put it in a video uh, yeah but probably next week I might do a bigger melt get some fresh gas and uh, yeah start making a whole bunch of copper bars that I can sell on eBay and um, if not you know I might even start keeping them uh, for myself just stacking more so I'll give you an example um, so this is one and a half kilos and you can see the you know it's nice bright shiny now um, and that's all I do because within a week it's going to look like that or maybe two weeks so you can see the difference and so it doesn't matter how shiny how you can make it look like gold I'm not interested in that I'm interested in just clearing off all the impurities so it's just a straight out but this is what we get at the end we get a nice you know beautiful uh, brown copper bar that just if you don't uh, handle it too much you'll get a nice even patina and uh, otherwise where you handle it does get a little bit of black spots but you could probably polish it out and start again um, obviously if I polish this it'll come back like this but that's how a copper bar this is one of the big ones uh, I'm not really making these real big ones um, because they're just too big so right that weighs 4.2 kilos okay so that's uh, uh nine pound copper bar and they're just too big for anything they're too big to um ship they're even harder to make the bigger the bar the more harder it is because you've got to melt you've got to have a lot of copper melted to get that going so even that's probably too big this one's a little bit too small i'd love to be able to get them closer or just over a kilo um i think that's one kilo is enough um yeah but there you go all right guys well keep scrapping have fun don't forget let me know what you think i should be doing with uh, melting copper and any other projects i might uh, uh do some uh bars from these copper stackers i might even melt some aluminium i've got quite a bit of nice uh, good quality extruded aluminium i might make some more uh, aluminium bars if you remember this one this is one that didn't really turn out that good but uh, aluminium bars but you know they're just not worth selling or doing this it was more for uh fun than anything but uh copper is where it's at this is what i enjoy doing most and uh how's that that's beautiful look at that hey and uh you know obviously you can stamp it but um because there's pits and stuff the stamping doesn't really look that good unless you found a good spot around the sides maybe stamped it there but i just prefer to keep them a la natural because you can always stamp at any time all right guys keep scrapping have fun and i'll catch you next time